Hello and welcome to this balance tutorial on where to stand when doing online coaching. My name is Tyler Valencia and I'm the president of KIPPS and Time to Train Fitness. Right now, we're standing in my home office, is that, which is actually where I film online workouts for my YouTube company, Time to Train Fitness. This is not a gym, this is just a set actually inside of my house, inside of my home office. And we're gonna be talking about where do you stand when you're filming content. That's one of the big things that I feel like can drastically improve. And we're gonna be talking about different things, not just stand here for this, stand here for that. We're gonna be talking about the why as well. So let's kick it off with talking about a common issue that I see. The number one common issue that I see is that when people are filming workouts is they stand too far. The main reason they do that is that they're worried that they're gonna cut something off when they do it. and I totally understand that you want to stand far back because you want to make sure people see, but there's so many other things that come into, in, into factoring that, that if it's going to look good or it's going to look bad or if you're too far, too, too far uh, forward, all those things that I want to talk about now. So the first thing that really plays a factor is, of course, to be lighting. The further you stand back from your optimal space where your lights are, it becomes darker. So your camera has to work more while it has to work harder to try to really capture that. And if it doesn't have enough megapixels, it's gonna be really blurry and in your, in the audience is gonna be able to see it and it's not gonna look good. And so if you don't have the lights, I have three lights on me right now. That's the first one. The second one I talked about already mentioned it is with the camera. If it doesn't have enough megapixels, it's not gonna look, but look good. The number one tip that I can give you though is to practice, is to find that apt optimal spot in terms of where you have everything in frame for that certain exercise, okay? So that is the number one thing that I'll say, practice, 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 but that whole standing too far back, that's one of the major things that we're gonna address here. And so let's jump into actually tip number one here. And that is learn to use your full workout space. And so finding where to stand and utilizing your full space, it takes practice, it takes confidence, because at first you're probably just gonna to wanna to stay in that one spot. You just think here, here's my, my space, I'm just gonna work out here, because you haven't learned how to become comfortable in it. It's just like with, if you're working in a gym, or if you are working in some type of facility where you're doing well, wellness coaching, it takes time to practice. And with not being locked in in one space, and I'll get to later on the number one, <laughs> a big one for that. But with the practicing is it is that each exercise is going to be determining where you're standing. If I'm doing upper body exercises, I can actually stand a little closer. The reason being is that people don't need to see your feet while you're doing exercise. You can tell them through the camera what the feet are doing, but they don't need to see it. If you're doing a bicep curl, a lateral raise, all they need to see is their upper body. That's what they're gonna be looking at. Yes, you could take a second to step back, show what the feet are doing, but making sure that you just go through what the cues are for, what they visually need to focus on, that's a big thing. And again, that goes with knowing your full workout space with that, okay? So the next thing that I wanna talk about that's in the same vein of that is that up close is great for motivational speeches when I'm up close and you don't have, and you're not editing your videos and you want people to see the emotion, you want them to see the sweat, you want them to see how intense something is. Coming up close is a great way to know that. And so uh, later on, I'm gonna talk about one of those things, but knowing how far up to come is a big thing with that. If you're giving a motivational speech that, okay, we're, this is where we're gonna be jumping into this, we're gonna go intense right here, you gotta know how close you can go. So I know that right about here, that's probably the closest I should come for it looking good in frame if I'm not editing it. I do edit my workout videos so I can always adjust those things, but if you don't edit them, you gotta know where you can go, how far you can go back with that. It's tip number two here, and I've kind of talked about this one already. I'm gonna use a different example of this, but let the imagination do the work. The example I'm gonna use for this is actually cycling. So with indoor cycling, what I always do when I'm setting someone up to do a cycling workout, in terms of what I kind of want them to have in frame, is it usually starts around actually the shin. Because to be honest, 
people know what the, the foot's doing when it's on a bike, when they're pedaling. And just how I talked about with certain exercises, people know what your feet are doing on the ground. Yes, you can cue those things. Yes, they can be important with the whole workout, but typically you don't need to show those things unless you know that's your style, that's how you want it look looking. But most of the time, people know. And I would actually argue that showing and getting closer up our body and then cutting it off at the shin right there, people can see your expressions, how I talked about. They could see the sweat, the emotion of the workout, which they get attracted to. So with workouts that we do with Time to Train Fitness, come at the shin, and some of the only times that we'll actually show the flywheel is maybe when we're doing some type of seated push that gets it going and then people could see that what that looks like. Maybe there's no talking on that, or then maybe it's a second angle. But again, it's close up to see the emotion, see the intensity, and again, let the imagination do the work for those types of things. Now, tip number three, and this one has kind of been hinted along, and it's actually something that is really helpful for me filming this workout or this tutorial right here, is that if you could find an old playback monitor, or maybe in your office you have a TV, and sometimes you just need a cord, you need to figure out what the proper cord for it. If you're using an iPad, or using an iPhone, if you have the proper adapter, and I can link that in the description, that there's a certain adapter that you can use that just takes an HDMI into it, and you can plug it right into your TV or a monitor, or if you're using a mirrorless camera like how I use, that I just have to use a micro HDMI cord that plugs into a TV, and actually that's how I can freely walk around here, is that I actually have a monitor that's off to the side right here, pointing right at it, and it kind of lets me know how close I can get when I was saying, this is pretty much how I know. It's because out of the corner of my eye, I could see it. And if you probably played this back, you could see me glancing over just out of the corner of my eye and seeing kind of where I am. And that's how I knew with back here, where I'm at and where the side of my frame is here. That really helps with the confidence is that if there is some way that you can check off, that you don't have to be worried that how it looks and then you're making sure that you're in frame because you wouldn't want to get to a point where you're filming something and then all of a sudden your head's right cut off or it's you're too far back and you're thinking, oh, I should have stood closer. And you can eliminate that with finding an old playback monitor, TV that you can just plug it into and all of a sudden you see yourself and you can just take that out of your mind. Peace of mind knowing, okay, I can just kind of see myself, I'm looking good and I can just move along with the workout. So big booster right there. And sometimes you just gotta find the appropriate cord for it. So this has kind of been a tutorial on where to stand. And the tips that I gave, when you start combining all of those together, you really get to see the experience and why. Why you're putting a monitor, why you're getting comfortable with your space if you're doing some type of skater. And you gotta know, oh, my feet in, feet out. All that kind of stuff, you're getting comfortable with your space, you are be able to walk around it and not be locked in one space because that's the key with online workouts, creating that engagement through the camera so that when somebody's watching it, they feel everything, that, all the emotions that you want them to feel. If they were standing right there with you or you're in the living room with them, you want them to feel those things. So hopefully this has been useful. Make sure that you check out all the other great tutorials on this channel and use them. Build your, continue to use them to build your business, listen to the podcast, all that great stuff. And I'll check, and I'll see you in the next one.